the G Wade Podcast. The G Wade Podcast, bringing you the cool interviews, the hot, the hot topics, topics, and all that other crap. The, the G Wade Podcast with, with Deacon, Deacon Dirty. Dirty. What's up, y'all? It's your boy G Wade holding it down. G Wade Pod- Podcast, the all new G Wade Podcast on the Thinking Out Loud Network. And I'm kicking it alongside with my man, Deacon. Dirty. And we got to say, it's weird that I don't have the headphones on. It's just weird I to me. I wonder why you have them on. Because it, I'm like, we don't need them now. You know what I mean? We can yell across the room. <laughs> and I think with the headphones, it, it, it causes you to talk lower. When you don't have the headphones on, you start to project them more or speak. Because you hear yourself in your ear when you got the headphones. I don't know. I'm just talking, y'all. There you uh, go. We got special guests in the building. David Moffat is in the house. What's happening? Cool. Good afternoon. Glad to be here, bro. Oh, that's what's up. Oh, he's trying to throw on the Barry White. And is he gone? Hey, <laughs> you know hey. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> now, he wasn't hey. talking like that. He wasn't talking like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'll be hey. sure to talk deep. Then he's singing yeah. all in falsetto. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what's good, bro? Hey, I'm doing good, brother. Just blessed to be here. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, for y- you all wondering, uh, why is Dave, why is David in the building? Uh, September. We're in September, right? September yeah, is September. Prostate Awareness Month. Yes, Prostate Cancer Awareness prostate Month. Prostate Cancer yes, Awareness Month. Yes, yes. And uh, of course, you being a survivor yes, of sir. Amen. Uh, prostate cancer, uh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, you wanted to talk about that as well as kind of inform our brothers, our black men, uh, all men really, but um, you know, about the making them aware yes. of prostate cancer. But let's back it up a little bit so that we can kind of bring. Okay, uh, sounds good. Uh, our listeners into who you are. Uh, so let's back up. So you are from where? I'm from New York originally. Oh, what part? New Rochelle. New Rochelle. Yeah. Uh, right the, next the, to Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon right next yeah, to the yeah. Bronx, White Plains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm familiar. I'm okay, familiar. okay. Um, uh, shout outs to, uh, well, I think he's in North Carolina now, but shout outs to Trey Bangs, who used to be up there in New Rochelle. Okay. Uh, artist up there. Okay. Real dope. Okay. Um, so, and so... What brought you to Atlanta? It was, um, I got out the service, man, back in the day, and uh, I thought it was a good place to raise what, a young what, family uh, at the time. I was in the Marine branch? Corps. Okay, that's yeah, what's up. Yeah. Appreciate your service. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. So I thought it was a good place to raise a young family, and uh, it was a little slower than New York at the time when I got out. Okay. Um, what year s- was that? Uh, 92. Okay. All the... Uh, Civil service jobs were frozen at the time I got out, and okay. so I was able to Up take in New the, York. yeah, I was able to take the entrance exams for the fire department, the post office, the police department, but nobody was hiring. Okay, so my mom's was down here, and uh, had a couple other relatives down here, and came down and took a job with the Department of Corrections in the state of Georgia. Really? Yeah. Wow, how was that, dude? It was crazy. I couldn't even Worked imagine. Worked at a maximum security prison, um, uh-huh. Phillips Correctional. Facility Where up in that? Buford, Georgia. Buford. Okay, yeah, okay. up on 85. You ever been there, D? <laughs> <laughs> Not to the facility, but I've, I've been to Buford, yeah. <laughs> you have never had been there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, I, you know, that was my first move here, and it was uh, it was eye-opening coming yeah. to the South. Yes. Slow down on you. Y- oh, yes. Yeah, what well, yes. was you say, 92? 92. Shoot, I didn't come down until uh, 2004, so I can only imagine. Oh, so you missed what, the Olympics and everything. I missed it all. Yeah. No, th- when was the Olympics? 96. 96 yeah. Oh, 96. Yeah. I th- wasn't it? There wasn't a 2006 Olympics? Huh. Oh, I'm tripping. <laughs> 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 My bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, nah, yeah, so I missed the Olympics and everything. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Is it, what, what was the one with... There was like a bomb or something. Yeah, that was ninety six. That was the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They did a movie or something about yeah, they it. Just, I think. Yeah, they did a movie. All right, that's mm-hmm. what's up. Wow. Okay. Okay. So you came down in ninety two, uh, realized that this pace is snail like a mug. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> compared was. to New York. Yes, it was. What were you doing in New York prior to? I got out the service and before we moved down here actually. Did um, you go straight out of high school? Or college? No, I was in college before okay. I went into the service. I was at John Jay University in Manhattan. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, DMC. What did he say? John, yeah. Yeah, John Jay University. <laughs> Come on, man. You're play, you playing with me, D. Catch up, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? I acquired yeah. the knowledge. Right. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I was being a knucklehead, man, cutting classes. Right, and, right. You know, there was, I think. Eight to one, females to males. Okay, okay. I had okay. a couple I, cousins rolling less. with me, yo. You let's go. To, <laughs> let's go to the bar. Let's right, cut right, class. Right, right, and, right. You know, my mind just wasn't where it needed to be at the gotcha. time. So, 
I said I needed to uh, do something different because I didn't want to be on the block. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, so but I said, you know how they always say, man, black man ain't got no reason to be in uh, the, 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 the man's army or the man's military or whatever. That's true. That's true. You felt that That's way? That's true. Yeah, I felt that way, but I felt like if I didn't uh, get off the block, you know, and doing stupid stuff, man, that uh, it wasn't going to be a good look for my life. Right, so right. So I want to do something different, man. I said I was going to do something that I would never do in my civilian life. Okay. And so I signed up for the Marines. Wow. Yeah. So my family was shocked. I, I can only imagine. They were shook, yeah. I thought about it. I thought about the Army at one point. Yeah. Because that's when I was in my loss phase, and I was like, I don't gotcha. know what to do. Yeah. And, you know, they'll try to get you when you <laughs> when yeah. you lost, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But, uh, yeah, no. Yes, I, 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 I fought through that one and uh, yes, sir. ended up taking some filing clerk job or something. <laughs> 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 you know, regular stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so, uh, so uh, enlisted, what year was that at? 88. 88? Yeah. 88. Oh, wow. 88 to 92. 88, bro. You, yeah. You, yeah, you did right. You did right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was doing something else in 88. Gotcha. Okay, right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> And so how long did you serve? Four years. Four active, four inactive. What, so my contract was eight years. Okay. Yeah, legally they had, had me eight for eight years, but I did my four enlisted, and then okay. I just had to stay on the registry for four years. Gotcha. So that's what, if they want to call you back or something like yeah, that. Yeah, in case uh, they brought the draft back. Yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And so um, you left the military, stayed how long in New York before you came down? Got out in February. We, I think we moved down in s probably four to six months. Really? Yeah. So you was out. Yeah. Well, well, why were your parents, or your mom and everybody? My mom was here. here. My dad was still in New York. They were divorced. Okay. But my mom was down here with my stepfather. Is she from here? No. Okay. Everybody's from New York. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought maybe, you know, some family was already here. I mean, I know they were here, but mm -hmm. were, were from here or something no, like that. No, no, not at all. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So now you're here in Atlanta, uh, slowed in a mug, 92. Yeah. What you doing? I got into law enforcement, man. I um, was on my first marriage, and okay. uh, and it was uh, it was tough, man. Married here, you came down, married. Got married okay. and moved here. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, had a ready-made family, and uh, you know, just wanted to be a good dad, a good husband, and uh, I always wanted to be in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like my mentality at the time. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Black man want to be in the, in the law enforcement. We, we need more. <laughs> well, black my dad man. was a cop, so it kind of yeah, up okay. in New York. So uh, it kind of it kind of showed me something different. Did he come home with the stories? Was it as as wild and foul as they as we know it, it to be? <sighs> well, my dad never really showed the stories. Um, I kind of just seen just from you know being with him with his uh, coworkers and stuff like that, just from the outside looking in. But he never really shared too much of. Mm -hmm the inside world of being a cop at that time. Really? Yeah. Wow. Not until I got into it, and then he started to share some of his stories. And okay. Always told me if your heart wasn't in 100%, get out of it. Yeah. You be, you're going to get hurt or get somebody else hurt. Yeah, well, we're seeing a lot of that right about yes, now. You know what I'm saying? It, yes. <laughs> it's kind of crazy right about it is. now. It is. Um, uh, speaking of which, I mean, uh, you know, of course, I, I don't know where they hide in the... Um, Derek Shaven, the racist Derek Sh Shaven, Chauvin, whatever yes. his name is, the yes. one who kneeled on George Floyd's neck. Yeah. Uh, but we're seeing all of that kind of craziness go on. Matter of fact, where are they hiding them? Because they don't say nothing about that man no, no. more. They, nope. I, I hate to take the conversation here, but well, just for, go there. <laughs> but, but, but for a second, um, uh, the the Brianna's case. Yeah. yeah oh, the, they got awarded that money. Yeah, they threw money at the situation, and none of the guys got convicted. It's, it's kind of like a slap in the face. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. not like they can't lost money out of their pocket. I mean, that's insurance. You know what I mean? I'm there sitting there like, but, 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 and it, it, nothing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, that's crazy. Um, uh, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. Uh, Ahmad, what's my man? Aubrey. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know it's just it's crazy. It's, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough to watch it. It's tough to see it. Now, um, do you experience anything like that as a black man in America? <sighs> Not just in New York, just in America. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Because um, when I was in law enforcement here in, in Georgia, I experienced it. Like my first experience with racism in Georgia, I was with the Department of Corrections. And, okay. Uh, I actually did pretty good in academy. Graduated top of three in my class. Wow, um, that's what's Which up. was pretty good. So when I got back to Phillips. You know, they allowed us to pick our shifts or whatever. So at the time, my ex-wife, she was uh, working days at, uh, for IBM. Okay. And so I decided to work third shift so we could kind of 
the, the child care in the bud gotcha. or whatever. Right, um, right. And so I got on third shift, man. I was working in the maximum security, doing a lot of gang bangers from Miami and mm. all of that out there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we kind of ran the, uh, the block on a, a very respectable level mm -hmm. so we wouldn't have a lot of confrontations you right, know right, right. Um, not really being judgmental just doing our job man hey man just respect the fact i have a job to do but not really pushing the envelope to make them feel like they're in a lesser position right yeah yeah because that seems like it seems to be the well i don't know if that's the overall thing but that's what we always seem to see portrayed yeah the see ceos you know going at the uh, inmates just disrespectfully and all that kind of stuff yeah. now i know they can be they can. <clears throat> wild in themselves but at Absolutely. the same time yeah it's, it's yeah. crazy when you can't keep your composure yeah you know? it is it is <laughs> so i had this supervisor who didn't like the way we kind of ran the the building you uh -huh. know she she kind of wanted to she wanted the iron fist yeah and just light the gas under the fire you wow. know what i'm saying and just call, have incidents going on and so did that justify some kind of money or something is that what it is? i don't know man i don't really know what it was i just know uh she had an issue you know with mm -hmm. male inmates and I don't really know what that was, her oh. background on it. But anyway, um, <laughs> she didn't like it, and she reported us to the supervisor. Okay. So I was like, okay, we don't have no fights going on. Mm -hmm. We don't have nobody getting killed, yeah, stabbed, nothing like that. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> so she wanted to write us up for insubordination, and we had to go on top of the hill to speak to the man, per se. Really? Yeah, and when I got in there with the man, he didn't want to have to hear nothing I had to say. You Meaning? Know, first of all, he was white. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll just be honest. And right, he, right, right. He was from the good old boy network. Okay. And yeah. so that's the Say first less. time yeah. I experienced in Georgia the good old boy network. Really? Welcome to the <laughs> South. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it took me for a loop. Um, the way he was talking to me, like, I w like here I'm in uniform. Yeah, yeah, representing yeah. Representing just like him. And he was talking to me like I was an inmate. Wow. And so I was like, no, nah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So he kept going on, on, and on, and on. And she's like, he's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm my supervisor yeah 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 and so um the next thing that happened he was like i don't like none of y'all from new york <laughs> and so then i was like yeah, he, he got called me a yankee here, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> then he called me a nigga oh oh mm. oh 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 so that uh kind yeah, of set off a trigger yeah. for me so um i snatched him up in the office and kind of had him bro. on his back i don't want to meet him outside though because you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> i want to go from the, the uniform to the jumper you yeah know what I'm saying? <laughs> man and i just he just hit a, he hit a he hit a real nah he hit a nerve yeah yeah, yeah wow and plus at the time i didn't know i had ptsd so he really hit a trigger. oh yeah. yeah wow so wow you suffer yeah. from that yeah man really i do, I do. wow I so do. what 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 how was that diagnosed i it was diagnosed through uh um in my first marriage i had a domestic Okay. And uh, also in my second marriage, mm -hmm. I had a domestic. And through that domestic and that second one, it realized that there was an issue going on. Okay. That I had an anger issue going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the first time, I used to look at the VA like it was this monster. Mm -hmm. And to get into law enforcement, you know, it's a hard struggle because you got to have your eyes dotted, your T's crossed. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everything has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So you just hiding behind those demons that you got, you know, just to wow. get in the club. Yeah, yeah. Know? And then even in the club, you don't want to be ostracized. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't want anybody to think that you were thinking anger issues yeah, or issues, right. suicidal issues or any of those emotional, yeah, yeah. What, we, what we see today, like in the mental health mm -hmm, realm. So mm -hmm. um, it forced me to take a hard look, man, and go down that path. And I realized it was probably the best thing I could ever did. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, but, so what was it, I guess, from, was it from the military? Yeah. Well, yeah. you were, was it combat? Yeah, I was in the first Gulf War, man. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've ever talked to anybody that was ever. Yeah, been in the Philippines, man, when they were trying to assassinate the president. In the Philippines, we did security detachment. Was in the Korea when they were protesting the Olympics in 88. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was also in Panama when they were trying to uh, kidnap the students, American students, the security detail mm -hmm. over there, man. Mm -hmm. So I've seen my share of combat mm -hmm. for the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> Your whole life is like a Netflix movie, which you were <laughs> just watching before y'all walked right, in. Right. Here. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Wow. I, I you know I asked myself this probably a month ago or so. Yo, you think you might have any PTSD? And the only reason why I ask, not because I'm exhibiting anything. At least I don't think I am. Right. Um. 
because you know when you grow up a certain way in a certain neighbor, neighborhood in a certain way, right? Yeah, a certain environment, certain certain environments, yeah. certain things you see you and witness and part participate in, yeah, can leave and you know, uh, can leave you uh, what is it uh, damaged? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, you know, I, I you know I thank God that uh, you know what I mean, whatever was going on, you know, He delivered and healed and set me free from it. So you know Amen, what I mean. Brother. But I asked myself that about a month ago. Okay. And I was like, hmm. I ain't doing nothing, but, you know, it was just a self-examination moment, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now you slam the dude down on the ground. Yes. <laughs> Who are you calling? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and what yes. happened there? I mean, what? I had to stay. Well, my shift was 11 to 7, so, of course, you know, they wrote me up and everything. Yeah. And subordination. Yeah, and yeah. Violation of policy. So forget the fact that he but said we had a new, But we had a new warden that okay. had came to the prison at that time, and he was from up north, so... He just kind of wanted to know the full story. Gotcha. So we got in his office when it's time to get off, and he got the full story, mm -hmm. and I went back to work the next day. <laughs> so I didn't have any more issues out of that okay. lieutenant. But um, it was just a different environment, bro. Yeah. It was a different environment. Okay. And then, so what, what are some of the, um, the like, what do they do for people who are suffering from PTSD? Like, what are the, what's the <laughs> therapy like? What's the... Well, for me, um, I think... I think my PTSD just, just, I think it was in a combination of when I was younger, my parents got divorced. Um, I was uh, sexually molested by one of my older cousins that I never talked about right, right. until I became a grown man. Okay. And, um, so I think for me, the PTSD just kind of was the top of stuff that was it ready was to It was compounding, yeah, anyway. yeah. I feel but like uh, for PTSD... Um, for me, the hardest part was letting my family know that they could be my support system. Gotcha. The mindset was that you didn't experience what I did. You wasn't you walking in my shoes. You yeah. So therefore, I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk about it. Yeah, I got you. And so that's from marriages to children mm -hmm. to family to jobs, mm -hmm. you know. I've had jobs, man, where I would just get this, you know, get in, learn my whatever I was doing. Right, right. Excel in it. And then just walk off. Really? Because it was like, it was like this this uh, thrill I was looking for. Okay. And I couldn't really explain it at the time. And you know, my ex wife used to say, "Yo, why you just walk off that job? Never got fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never got disciplined mm -hmm. off a job. It was just I got to a certain point, and it was just like that adrenaline, whatever got me in that job. Mm -hmm. I the just it was, was gone. gone. Yeah. Wow. So, That's um, interesting. And then also just finding out what my triggers were. Okay. That was the biggest. Yeah. Thing. That's yeah. yeah. I was gonna ask you that. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, not that you can want to need to share them here, but you know what I mean? But I was going to ask you, were there triggers and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, there was triggers. Um, like for me, like disrespect is one of my triggers. Um, loud noises like 4th of July, that type gotcha. of stuff. Right, right, even right. now when I got to go, or even when I was in law enforcement and qualifying at the range, mm -hmm. like firing weapons, that kind of puts me in a anxious even though i'm good at it yeah yeah it puts me in an anxious feeling yeah and, you know yeah. prior to mm -hmm. and then i'm good what i'm doing yeah, yeah and yeah. then after it takes me a minute kinda to kind of just come back de uh, decompress yeah. De yeah wow yeah. Okay. close slamming doors mm -hmm. that's like one of my main ones really it just, it'll take me over the top yeah. okay yeah and i just i don't know why so i don't know if it's the, the noise yeah. like soft closing doors yeah. and drawers yeah. you so know, you know you get in an argument you know yeah wifey might be like you That's another that. thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah she know it too. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what's up. That's what's up. And we laughing, but we're not making fun of it. That's, let's be clear. Well, well, you were talking about decompressing, and, and uh, G and I have talked about this before, you know, how um, because of all the, uh, a lot of the police brutality that's been going on for years now, how they should have, I don't know if they do, That's I'm, I'm glad you're here, by the way, um, when officers are out in the field for so long, you know, especially, I guess, you know, they, when they come back in, you know, they, they, is there anything set in place where they can just, like, get stuff off their chest and talk about it before they, like, you know? Well, I'll just say it on this note, man. I'm glad you asked that question. Um, I fought for this country, and I, you know, did the civil service thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. and my just personal belief is that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. you know, that's my personal belief, and right. I'm not against law enforcement or anything like that. But the feeling is, I think that a lot of times that guys are put on a badge and a gun, and that just gives them this, this heightens, and they and they just feel like they can do anything and say anything. And um, 
the job is hard, it's stressful, mm -hmm. you know, but at the end of the day, if, if you can relate to just humanity, bro, you right. can do a good job. Because yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of good officers out there, yeah. but there's a lot of knuckleheads. Yeah. And one thing about law enforcement, I will say, is that they got that blue line, that they're not going to So that's a talk. real That's a real and that's thing. Real. Yeah. That's real. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and the fact that they feel like they're going to be ostracized or put in harm's way because mm -hmm. of, and at the end of the day, right is right and wrong is wrong. Yeah. And I know when I was in law enforcement, there were times where I got no situations, you know, and here in the South, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. And I'd just be like, you're not going to do that in front of me and just make my stand. Yeah. You know, I was com comfortable enough in my own manhood that, you know, I could make those calls. You know, what kind of took me out of law enforcement, I almost shot a 15 year old kid. Wow. And this is I, in, 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 in the in the midst of. um. Uh, pursuit or something like that or yeah it was, a call had went out mm -hmm. that these uh there was two young black males and they had guns on them and then they actually See, that's ended like up, the they key actually words right there when yeah. it comes to black male gun gun and then you know all hell breaks and, but loose. we know we're here in the south so it's not just black males with guns yeah There's right, a lot of white saying. males with absolutely, guns absolutely yeah you with know. gun racks in the back of the trucks yeah <laughs> with bumper stickers that say i got a gun in, in high school yes. in high school yes. in high school yeah so um i just i just felt like I couldn't live with myself, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm a black male, and that was a black, now, younger black he, male. It was wasn't a real gun. It was a BB gun they had, wow. you know, and it was just, you know, just cutting up, just, just scaring folk. Yeah, 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 doing know, the dumb just, stuff. Yeah, 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 and, you know, I had my hand on the trigger, and one of them dropped the weapon, the other one wouldn't, and I was coming up on them, you know, and I was like, Lord, please don't let me shoot this kid. Mm -hmm. I couldn't live with it. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't live with it. Now, I don't care what the circumstance was. And so I got close enough to him, and I was able to knock him down, knock the weapon down. I okay. think he was more scared of me yeah, 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 yeah. than I was really of but him. But he knew his was fake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so um, that shook me, man. Yeah. And that's kind of how I just got out of law enforcement. I walked away from it. Hmm. It really shook me up. Well, I mean, but just just uh, let's replay that scenario yeah. and it not be a black cop pulling up on a black 15-year-old with a gun. Oh, he would have been dead. Yeah, he would have been yeah. dead. Yeah, well, without question. Without question. To Tamir Rice. Question. Yeah. Well, that was a, what, it was a water gun or something, wasn't it? He was just yeah. playing out by himself. That was sad, bro. I saw that video. I was, man. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even want to watch it. You know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of times, you, you know, you get you get guys in there and they don't have any uh, type of education to other ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I had good parents that kind of gave me good values. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but going into service and be able to go all over the world. You got to see different. Saw something different, yeah, like a lot of third yeah. world countries. It saw me, saw like really what our, what our freedoms, what our privileges were. And that's mm -hmm. outside of the black and white. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In America. Right. But, um, you know, a lot of it I don't agree with, man, what's going on. And mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, guys just really need to stand up and do what's right. Yeah. As opposed to just, yo, I'm just in this crew. Yeah. And yeah. that's basically what it Facts. is. Yeah. You know, so. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a proponent. And for this, I always, I've been saying for a minute that I believe that black police officers should police black communities. Um, some say different, and I'm not going to argue one way or the other. Gotcha. I mean, because I don't know how y'all lay out the, the rules and roster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's true. And then uh, and, and on top of that, I don't know the percentages of white police officers versus black police officers. Right. may not be enough to go around. Right. But I'll, I, that's my thought, though. And I say that because of what we see on... Uh, TV, the videos, like you just said, if it was another scenario, 15-year-old would have been dead. Absolutely. Now, I'm watching a video the other day, and this woman is going off on the plane because uh, I think the stewardess, the woman was black, the stewardess was white. I told her to move or sit down so that she can get by. The woman was just trying to go to the restroom. Correct. Uh, but something the woman, the stewardess, the flight attendant said to her, ticked her off. Mm -hmm. And so then on top of that, then other, like Karen, started chiming in. Mm -hmm. So she really just, listen, first of all, you know, she she letting it be known. Now, I'm, I'm getting to this. They called, of course, police. Mm -hmm. uh, the Two cops came on, a black cop and a white cop. The black cop was in in the lead. He went up to the woman, kind of went over to the side of her head and said, something, you can't hear it. You see the gestures. Yes. Yes. And she calms down. Yes. And I said to myself, if it had been the other dude, he probably would have dragged her out the plane. And I'm saying that to say, because we know how to talk to each other. We know yes. a look. We know a, 
Come on, fam. Because culturally, you know there, cause, cause culturally, there is a disconnect. You know? There's there a disconnect. There, yeah. there is. There is. And, and you can't, I don't think you can really, they get hired and they're going off their experiences mm-hmm. and their communities. Right. In their and communities, so a lot right. of times when they get in our communities, they don't live in those communities. Mm-hmm. So there's no compassion. There's no right. empathy in it. So therefore, it's, yo, I'm just going to do this job. Mm-hmm. There's no, I understand there's a job to do. I mean, you know, quotas. <laughs> Though there's not quarters, but there's quarters. Yeah, right? yeah okay. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So, because yeah, yeah. You know, they write tickets, mm-hmm. that's funding for their department. Gotcha. So, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Now, that's not what you came here for. <laughs> it's all good, man. I don't mind being yeah, open I mean, book, but uh, No, good. that was good, good man. Because this stuff, uh, you know, I've been knowing you for uh, how many years now has it been? Now, if y'all see me looking over, I'm looking at his, his lovely wife, Marjane, who's been a guest on the oh, show my, a couple of my times. Beautiful queen. Yeah. His beautiful queen. Yes. And, uh, you how long I've long I've known you now? A long time. Since you came here, right? What? I've been here, I've been here nine years. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, so no, I didn't know you nine years, have yeah, I? Nine okay, nine. yeah. I At least five, five yeah. Five. Okay. So then yeah. it's probably about the it's same about amount of time. Same amount of time, yeah. yeah. Same amount of time. And you've always supported, man. Absolutely. You've always been, you know, it's all love, been man. To her events and her a little uh, thing she puts together. You came to my 50th birthday yeah, party. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate so. the invite. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you like family to us. Yeah, appreciate that, yeah. man. I feel yeah. like family now. Yes. You heard that. It's on tape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> See y'all Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, but I've never really known anything about you. I've known about Marjane's Marjane. husband. Right, yeah, right. Marjane's husband. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The supporter. You know, you're always yeah, a strong I, I try. supporter while she up there doing her thing. Marjane is a singer, by the way, um, but up there, I Choose You, right? That's the name of the single. Um, um, but I've always seen you there supporting and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and I'm like, that's what's up, you know, yeah. but chilling in the back, too. Yeah, she's, but, a, uh, she's, she's an inspiration Yeah, beyond beyond a lot of things. That's bro. what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. So, yeah, never really known you, so you just telling me some things that I just never knew. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what's up. Yeah. But what we also... Well, uh, don't know, or well, I guess we do know, is that you are a survivor of prostate cancer. Yes, sir. And that that happened when you were um, diagnosed when? 2019. Diagnosed. Had my physical in April. Diagnosed in May. Okay. 2019. Yeah, 2019. 19, 2019. Yeah. May of 2019. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so. Just kind of school the people. I was kind of reading up a little bit. I'm like, I know about prostate, but I don't know <laughs> about. <laughs> and, and look, that's uh, yeah, it's um, wow. I took my yearly physical like I normally do. Mm-hmm. I work for Wellstar, so it's a healthcare system here. In yeah, Atlanta, yeah, Georgia. yeah. So um, you know, thank God, man, that they, you know, they encourage us to go get our physicals. Um, and I've and I've done that pretty much all my life. Mm-hmm. Um. Got the physical, everything was good. Maybe two days later, doctor's office called and said, hey, man, I need you to go see a urologist. Okay. And I was like, the P doctor for what? <laughs> uh, what I need to go to P doctor yeah, yeah, for? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, uh, your PSA level is up. Uh, and that's yeah. what measures your prostate level. Mm-hmm. So I was a little concerned because normally I don't get no call after a physical. Yeah, everything yeah. Everything is good. And so I went and scheduled a uh, meet with this urologist. And it, it just kind of like made me anxious because I didn't know no urologist. Mm-hmm. There was no reason for me to yeah, ever yeah, go to yeah. urologist. Well, yeah, yeah. And so I, at the time, I was working um, this place called the East Cobb Health Park. Okay. And it's like a Target of healthcare. It's got everything. <laughs> all, your, all your practices. Yeah, yeah, it's in all in one. So I was like, you know, I can go do work, kind of be on the down mm-hmm. with it. Nobody would really yeah, know yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. on. So I was in early May. I had um, a colonoscopy. Okay. And so I did that. And so I asked my doctor, did he know a good urologist over there? Mm-hmm. So he kind of pointed me over there. So I met with Dr. Bryant, and, um, who's a urologist, and he uh, did another physical exam mm-hmm. on me. More extensive than the one they do when you go for your normal for your physical. Annual. And yeah. I tell you what, man, I did feel violated. Wow. Like I was like, you know, because you know, we normally go to the doctor, and mm-hmm. he's up. You got to use a like digit what? or two, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what, maybe five to eight seconds? Yeah, you know yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but this brother, no, he's not a brother, but this doctor was in my anal cavity for yeah, about 45 yeah. seconds to a minute. Wow. Almost had me urinate on myself, and um, I was just trying to hold it, mm-hmm. and he's poking and probing and all of this, and then he finally came out and he said, uh, 
sat down at his desk, started marking this, started marking that. I said, Doc, how we doing? He said, I need you to get a, a biopsy. And I was okay. like, a biopsy for what? He said, I felt a nodule. Mm. So, of course, I'm mad. Yeah. Because I'm going back to my physical appointment. Yeah, my yeah, My doctor yeah. didn't say nothing. He didn't say, right, good. yeah, yeah. So, I was really anxious, upset, and I talked to a couple people um, at my location. They was like, yo, Dave, relax. He's a spe- specialist. It's what, it's he, what do. he do. He yeah. pokes and probes, so he kind of knows. So um, he said, you have to get a biopsy. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. And that biopsy, what it does is it, it, they take 12 samples out of your prostate. Mm-hmm. And it's like a pizza. So um, when I did mine, mine came back. Five of the samples were cancerous. It wasn't just in one quadrant or one half. It was in the whole prostate. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and so, but to go back a little bit, my PSA level was 4.8. Now, what is it supposed to be at? So, as long as I was working in Wellstar, when I started working at Wellstar, even before, you know, when you get your, when you get your scores back from your physical, it mm-hmm. didn't say greater than, less yeah, than, right, or yeah. equal to, mm-hmm. right? So, when I looked on PSA, it says from 0 to 4. Okay. So, mine has always been between that 0 and 4. It's mm-hmm. been over 2 the whole time I've been with this healthcare yeah, yeah, system. Yeah. But it went outside that four. Oh wow! So that was the trigger for yeah. him to say, "Go see this yeah, person." Go check, yeah. So, but I kind of got upset because a friend of mine told me to do some research, mm-hmm. and they said, "Go look at what a PSA should be for a normal man of fifty years old, mm-hmm. and it should be between zero and one point eight. Okay. So the whole time I was well star, it should have been a conversation of mm-hmm. something's Something going on, levels something a little, right? Yeah. And to let people know, man, I didn't have any. I wasn't having any symptoms. I wasn't That's having any ask, erection any issues, no blood in the urine, yeah. no frequent, you know, more than frequent urination. Yeah, and yeah. Anything like that. I didn't have any symptoms at mm-hmm. all. So it was. And no pain or any any kind of thing like that. Okay. It was it was just a total shock. Yeah. It was a total shock. Now is that something that you know? It's, I don't know how this works, but it seems like certain diseases affect certain nationalities and black people seem to just get affected by them all. Right now, I think we're affected by COVID the most, you know, according to the way stats seem to be. But, um... Well, this this particular cancer, man, it's one out of six men, brother. One out of six men? Men. And we know one out of six men across the board and and we are at the top of the food chain, which I did not know. Black and brown brothers. So what makes us so prone or susceptible to uh what i well i would say um just to go on that man i started a prostate cancer support group okay and um what i what i am noticing is that a lot of men are not going especially in our community are not going to the doctor yeah they're not going to the doctor unless yo you just it's life and death mm-hmm. like and my so arm not, is off right you know <laughs> yeah so we're not getting the yearly physicals mm-hmm. um we're not knowing our PSA level. Right. We're not talking about, especially if it's dealing with your sexual organ, mm-hmm. if you're having symptoms or that type of thing, but also that we don't know our family history. True, true. We're not talking about not our family talking history. About it, yeah. And that's huge because it, it, it could be your... The, like the line, lineage. lineage. Or, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, um, and for me, I don't really don't know if it's that side. Oh. So they're finding out a lot of guys are getting these type of cancers and this and that in their really? 40s and their 50s. Yeah, so for me, I just realized at the end of the day, man, I knew that God allowed me to go through this. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he didn't want me to hold it, you know, to myself. So, so what did you, um, so after you were diagnosed, of course, what, what was the, what was your next step after having <laughs> sp- spoken to your now? So he was like, your, uh, I need you to get a bigger picture. And I wasn't really feeling comfortable with Dr. Bryant, to be honest with you. He was a, he, he's a smart dude, mm-hmm. but he was just the percentages and the statistics. And I'm like, uh, bro, I'm not a statistic. This uh, is my story. He's speaking all this, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he referred me to a surgeon, Dr. Navapar. Okay. And then he re- referred me to a radiologist, oncologist, which is the radiation doctor. And I told him straight out the bat, I wasn't doing radiation. Okay. I kind of knew what the process was. It was five days a week, 30 something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, I just, I, in my mind, I knew I couldn't do that right Mm -hmm. then. So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll talk to Dr. Navapar. Dr. Navapar, man. Um, he, he, oh, he's been a godsend brother because this man was like, he just kept it 100 Mm -hmm. all the way through the process. Right. Right. And he was like, at the end of the day, we're going to do what you want to do, but I just want you to have all the information. Gotcha. And so then he was able to get my um, biopsy scores back, and he was like, this is what it is. Mm-hmm. These are not statistics or whatever. This is your story. Right, this right, what right. Dealing with. 
And when I first got to 4.8, I had a couple partners and guys that I knew their PSA levels were 7s, 9s, wow. 22s, wow. 25. Mm-hmm. And they were telling me, bro, yo, it's 4.8, you good to go. So in my mind, I was like, I don't got nothing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everybody's story is different. Mm-hmm. Like I could have a Mine was stage two, about to go stage three. Okay. Which and people say four point eight, but then there's people that may be seventeen something mm-hmm. and be in stage one. So it's just so everybody's story is yeah, different. Yeah, everybody's yeah. story is unique. Gotcha. Um and Dr. Navapar just really was like real talk, man. Even like with Marjane, my mother, my sister, um, they could ask any question that they wanted to. Nothing was off the table. Yeah, he yeah. was fully transparent. Mm-hmm. And he was just honest with me and um so I appreciated that. And he we have a connection where he's like family now. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I decided to do the surgery. Okay. And so after I decided to do the surgery and that's And what happens in during the surgery? They take the whole prostate they out. They take the whole prostate out, okay. Yeah. So prior before the surgery, um, Dr. Nalpar said my main mission is to get the cancer out of you. Mm-hmm. And then my second mission is to get put you on a plan where you're healthy. And mm-hmm. You know, you're a young man and you're healthy, and I think you're really going to bounce back. Right, right. The third function that I look at, and, and that's between you and your wife, mm-hmm. if you know, because you're going to deal with ED. Yeah. You know, you're going to deal with not being able to get an erection on your own. Right, right. So, and it, we'll do whatever we need to do to get you there. Mm-hmm. Um, For me, I heard it, but that really wasn't how I was feeling. Mm-hmm. Um. A week up before my surgery, I kind of had like a meltdown. And, you know, around my family, my wife, mm-hmm. my mom, my sister, my children, they all, they were great. I had a great support system. I wasn't really facing the issue that was bothering me. The issue that was bothering me, it wasn't even the cancer, bro. Mm-hmm. That's what my mental was. It was, could I get an erection? Listen, you're a man, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's and, all and, you have and, to and, say. And, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I just realized that I'm kind of misdirected with my emotions. You know okay. what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, I should be like, yo, cancer is the main like, thing. Like you know, I can alive. live. Yeah, yeah I can be alive. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm thinking about my first priority is getting an erection. But then I guess as a man, you're like, but can I live with? Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you start thinking about those things. And because it plays on you. It does. I, yeah, it's, of course. It's not just a uh, physical battles. It's, it's, a, it's a spiritual and a mental battle yeah, as well on all fronts. So absolutely. He like really sat me down, man. It was like, look, I got you. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to be all right, you know. And I really had to just be real with myself and mm-hmm. know that that was my issue. Yeah, yeah. And I was protecting everybody else, saying I'm good, really, yeah, yeah, when yeah, I was, yeah. you know, and I had to be honest with myself. And I think that, for me, was the beginning of being okay with the process. Mm-hmm. So after the surgery, everything was good. Um, I healed up pretty good and everything. Um, but As reality so set in. Wifey. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we good? I, as okay, you can we see, good, we wa- good. wifey is very attractive, <laughs> and, you know, and got to, uh, we got to, like, you know, she walk around, you know, with her sexy clothes on and stuff <laughs> like that, and, you know, I couldn't get an erection. Right, right. And for the first time, that's Remember, they got pills, bruh. Bruh, when I tell you. I think the only person that, 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 that we know of that had the issues... Uh, who? Which uh, uh, mobster was it? Um, uh, was it Gotti? Was it Gotti? It was one of them who. Yeah. No, I don't think it was Gotti. Maybe it was. I don't know. But it had that issue. No, dude, it wasn't him. It was another dude. I can't think of. But yeah. had that issue. All this power and money and all that. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that, for the first time, because I never had a issues with getting an erection yeah. before. And I think for me, that first time, I just seeing my wife and not, not no feeling no yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. and you know th- um during the surgery they try to s- spare your nerves in mm-hmm. which my uh, dr navapar was able to do that okay and so he said eventually your nerves will wake up and they're basically talking anywhere from 18 months to two mm-hmm. years to two and a half years wow so i started having i could feel like a like something like the south is starting but, to rise yeah again. but yeah. but uh nothing bro yeah. and yeah i have to take pills mm-hmm. and i have to take uh cialis but it's it's in these commercials. Um, oh, these commercials off the chain, bro. And they, and it's like if we don't get results, and you'll get see results in like thirty minutes or you, you in believe, a day or something. You, like that? you believe the man? Well, for this for this situation, I don't know what men deal with ED, other health issues, but I know mm-hmm. with this prostate and removing of your prostate is nothing. Bro. Well, explain that then. So the removal of the prostate, what does right. that affect? 
Because it, I know it, it has something to do the, with like the semen trans- Yeah, oh yeah. They it, they take your um semen ves- vessel vesticles, I think they call it. Mm-hmm. So now you're when you're able to have pleasure, your orgasmic is not wet, it's dry. Right, right, right. So like for me now, mine are not they're not what well, some stuff coming out. You know, well, we but know there, there's there's, there's fluid some, that yeah, will come, but it's something fluid. mixes as it's coming out. Yeah. I don't know how God do yeah. it. This is amazing, huh? Yeah. yeah. And so another big thing with this is, you know, incontinence. So where you mm-hmm. you know, you have to wear diapers and pads and stuff like that. So gotcha. in the beginning, like Marjane would have her pads and liners and then mm-hmm. next in the bathroom I have my pads and my liners. Mm-hmm. So hers are the pink, mine are the gray. <laughs> and for men I think that's 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 tough, man. Yeah, of course. You know, this <laughs> is about you, oh, not about me. He's like, don't put me here. <laughs> He's just keeping it hunted. Yeah. 100, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> keeping know, the trio. Um, <laughs> you know, I just thank God for Marjane, man, because yeah. she really, um, she took care of me, man. That's what's up. She was very supportive um, to the fullest, mm-hmm. to the fullest, man. And, you know, my wife is nine years younger than me, bro. So, you know, a lot of things ran through my mind, mm-hmm. and um, she's she's been true. Yeah, all the way around. That's so I, I thank God for that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, not 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 every woman. Well, first of all, every man needs a a uh, good woman. A, yeah, yes. <laughs> a good woman. Yes. Uh, n- not every woman's going to run. Yes. Um, I you know, I, real quick, there's a, and I got to be careful how I tell the story so that I won't. Um, but nonetheless, somebody I don't know the person, but I know the person um, who. Uh, went through a situation actually they went through a situation it wasn't prostate it was they had a stroke gotcha and not as soon as they probably i think were on the gurney at the hospital his wife disappeared yeah and i'm like dang you know yeah. so certain you know cases where you know people don't want to stick around and take care of yeah. someone you know what i mean so you, you having a good wife like that is a is an amazing thing. It is, man. You know what I mean? All levels, brother. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so you're on the men now. Yeah, on the men, man, and uh, taking it one day at a time. Um, really trying to wear this aware- uh, raise this awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, God put it on my heart to do this, man. And I started this uh, prostate cancer support group at my job. Okay. And um, Other men from your job? Yeah, right? other men, and, okay. then, and then guys that are not even... Um, that work at my job. Okay. So uh, we're starting to do this. We had our second one last Saturday. Okay. Uh, we're going to try and do them once a month. But I know we have a common bond of prostate cancer, what's bringing us together to talk about the issues like we're right, doing right, now. Right. But I think what, what God is really leaning in is, is not so much the prostate cancer, but it's about men just having a real talk, not surface talk with mm-hmm. each other. Now, what kind of regimen did the doctor put you on after the whole process? For the prostate cancer? Yeah, like what, what do you have? You yeah, doing, they, like? well, they wanted to put me on the Cialis, mm-hmm. and that's going to, or whether it's one of the other ones they have out of there, Viagra, whatever. Right, right. Whatever works better for your body, which they're trying to get that initial blood flow back to that area. Um, so I have to do that like every other day. Um, other than that, they just kind of want you to, you know, uh, stimulate your penis area, mm-hmm. whether it's yourself or with right, your spouse right. or something like that. They, you know, because they didn't want to build up scar tissue. Um, but for me, man, I just looked at trying to uh, work out a little bit more, mm-hmm. take care of my health that way, eat a little bit better, I which, say, I, ch- is it, is which I changed. Eat, eating change, yeah. Yeah, man, I just got off this Daniel fast a little while, uh, about a week or two ago. And um, it was the second one I did this year. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel good, man. That's what's I, up. I feel good. Lost like about 25 pounds. I know, but I was looking at you. I was like, oh, yeah. man, look a little slim. I was yeah. like, all right, good. That, yeah. You know what I mean? That's what's up. So, <laughs> you know, of course, I wanted to, you know, get back in the game and, um, you know, get a full erection. Oh, hold, so quick, so can you do me one small favor? The front door, can you just open it and turn the top lock so it won't latch? You, would you do that for me if you don't mind? Thank you. And so um, we were taking uh, doctors pre- prescribe you injection shots. Okay. And so this, these injection shots are like taking cocaine, pretty much. Really? To your penis so area. It's got you. Yeah, it's like it'll it shoots a massive blood flow to your penis area. Oh wow! So Marge and I and I talked about it, and you know we wanted to get back. Is to that something that you would be? Is that uh, uh, um? Something you do for on your own? Is that what you yeah. say? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay. so I had to get education for it through the doctor. I went through the education. 
one thing about um, these injections, they're not covered under your insurance, so you got to pay out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. And they're really hit and miss. So um, I got a prescription from my doctor, and he said, well, let's try it out, you know. So we tried it out first time. First couple times we did it, it was awesome, bro. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Um, but then it became this medicine. It's like three different medicines in one medication. Okay. And they became to be where it was a lot of discomfort. I agree. So after. Okay. And yeah. so. Um, now, you talking about discomfort For down me, there? yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because, um, you know, you could have an erection for four hours, four and a half hours. Ooh. And I'm being just like. You know, like when we're younger, man, and we have an erection, right, we, right. we know what our erection feels right, like. Right, 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 right. These erections, I never felt like that before. It's just a massive blood flow yeah, yeah, to the yeah, air. Yeah. So where I would have to take Sudafed. Okay. They tell you to take Sudafed to, thin it out. to get it down. Mm -hmm. And then I would also have to put ice on me. So just imagine, it was just totally discomfort. Yeah, so, wow. of course, in one hand, I want to have It's almost those like a good intimacy. problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, Marjane and I talked about it, and um, she was like, I believe God is just going to heal you Absolutely. like you're supposed to. Yeah. We yeah. just got to trust him. You just got to be patient. And that's one thing. Um, there's times where, as a man, we get very impatient. I say, and yo, we just, we I, just, I yeah. like all the fluff talk. You know what I mean? All that yeah. sound good. But yeah. let's book, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? We, we want, we, we want, there's still yeah. a, a we manliness want, yeah. about us. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and yeah. That, that plays a part of it. It does. You know what it I'm does. Saying? Yeah. And, um, you know, it just really, it checks you real quick because it lets you know that, um, that God made all of us, and and you know sometimes we just have to listen. Mm -hmm. We have to be still. We just can't get right back in the driver's seat. We right, 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 right. Something. So we decided. I haven't done the shots in about five months. Okay. And now I can probably get an erection, probably forty to fifty percent on my own. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I know, and like even when I talk to Doctor Navapar, I'm in head of the game where he sees it. You know where, Dave, man. I'm yeah. proud of you, brother. You Guys, said in your situation, two years, yeah. maybe two years mm -hmm. until they get a feeling. So we just, you know, I'm just depending on, you know, my faith, man, um, my health, mm -hmm. eating a little bit better, yeah, and just loving on my wife, man, and that's you know, up. that's that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now right. I I want to ask wifey, uh, but she's sitting over there like she like don't pull me <laughs> in, bro. <Blow> <laughs> If pull we ain't talking about my music, <laughs> pull her in, pull her in, pull her seriously, in. you gonna stay over there? I, 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 do I have to turn the camera around? Do I gotta turn the mics around? <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna respect that. I'm so, gonna respect um, that. <laughs> so our next month uh, meeting, mm -hmm. we're, we're inviting the wives. Okay. So it's gonna be a conversation where it's gonna be a little different mm -hmm. than the, just the guys. Yeah. And hopefully the wives will be able to share some stories, mm -hmm. and it just opens up conversation um, about you know what we're really going through. Right. You know. Now, aside from that. Will uh, do the women? Do y'all have y'all gotten together, or is this be the first time? It'll be the first time, really. And the women excited, so I talk to the guys. Because I think you're yeah. probably thinking to a degree, like, like you're the only one. But clearly, you know, nobody's really ever the only one. one. It's just you feel alone. You know what I'm saying? Uh, is this something that you think as women, y'all would want to get together and just have conversations on your own? You know, like a support group for the women, so that yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because women, you know, they talk. Yeah. We, man, we don't. You know what I'm saying? We internalize yeah, a lot of things. They grunt you know? a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I understand, fam. A lot of you know what I'm saying? A lot of, <laughs> a lot of grunts. And so what's, what's the, um, the follow-ups since the procedure? What, what's so what's every, the road ahead? So for the first year, every three to four months, I have to get my PSA to check. Well, I shouldn't have a PSA level. If I have a PSA level, then there's the conversation mm -hmm. that um, they believe. Well, in my case, the cancer was, um, it was it was right in that prostate area. It didn't get outside the prostate area. Okay, gotcha. So I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. um, so far, I've because this is treatable. Yes, it's treatable. clearly treatable. Um, but if it goes on, it can get very aggressive. It can get very aggressive. Like the yeah. big ones we talk about. And um, so for my first couple of PSA checks, I've been undetectable. Praise okay. God. You good, know what I'm saying? Good, so good. I got one coming up um, next week. Okay. Um, I have my, uh, it'll be a year physical after surgery um, Friday. So it'll be my first full physical. So I'm looking forward to that and also having a conversation with my original doctor. Okay. <laughs> so it's sort of during the physical, it's yeah, not yeah. just we go through the motions. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I got a lot of questions All for of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, I'm very excited and um, I just want to. 
create this awareness. Um, it's crazy because my job put out a little bulletin on an email mm-hmm. this week. And we were talking about this is prostate cancer awareness. Month. Right, right. And so I look around and um, look at TV, look at everything. And you don't hear nothing. NFL's back. NBA's back. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. And these yeah, all men. Nothing about, yeah. This would be the perfect time to talk about that, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And my thing is, in a week, we're going to be seeing pink all over the place. Yeah. yeah. TV, mm-hmm. jobs, everything. You yeah. know, I, and I was coaching for a while, so I know my kids used to get pink socks, pink cleats. Yeah, yeah, so Everything yeah. pinked mm-hmm. up. And, yeah. And, and, and I support that to the fullest. Because with, with prostate cancer. awareness, is bl- light blue? Yes. Light blue, right? Yeah. Light blue. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... So my feeling was that we are men, we are ahead of our households, mm-hmm. you know, and we're not talking, we're not really having this conversation, or it's a conversation that, that wasn't want to be heard. Yeah. So like I said, I was looking at this flyer, and I looked, and I clicked on it, and I was like, it was at the bottom of the flyer, but I'm like, this is Prostate Cancer, cancer, cancer yeah. Awareness Month, and I just read two articles on breast cancer wow. above it, but mm-hmm. like bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I looked on Oh, it. and you guys. Yeah, down yeah. the bottom, and then I looked at the picture, and it was this old white guy. I was about 80 something years old. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not even a real yeah, story. I'm okay story. with him being on it, but yeah. I think it needs to be a little diverse. Let's, let's, be, let's be real. This is the face of prostate cancer. Yeah. So <laughs> most people think about this is just. And so you'll wait till the, yeah, I'm, this, a, wait till I'm an older man for he's that. An yeah. older white guy, 75, 80 years and so old. So when should uh, men, not just black men, but when should men start having their prostate checked? The when does it start to. Well, I'm telling men now, hey, have you gone to the doctor? Mm-hmm. Do you know your PSA? And do you know your family history? I think those are the things that start the conversation. Right, right. We also, um, the guys I'm, um, I was talking to them about, and next year I want to do like some type of walkathons, type of okay. raise some awareness yeah, yeah. for October. So these next eight to ten months, just mm-hmm. kind of working on that. Um, I think it's just having the conversation, you know. Um, I was forced to have the conversation with my son, mm-hmm. my nephews, you know, because now, you know, I found out my dad had it. Mm. But my dad never talked to me about it. He talked to my sister. And I don't know if my dad just felt less of a man. Less of a man. Or he couldn't, you know, like. Is your sister older or younger? Younger. Younger? Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that bothers me because I felt like we could not have a man real man. conversation. Yeah. It was a surface. We mm-hmm. never talked about his lowest point. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I think in the relationships with fathers and sons and even grandfathers, and it just goes down and down and down. These are things that we don't talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it affects, like, when we deal with these issues of prostate cancer. And I think God should, you know, I even want to get in maybe some of the schools and mm-hmm. just create. Because, you know, women, they talk about their breast exams. And, yep. you know, when they're growing into their yep. their womanhood. Mm-hmm. And, guys, we don't but talk they, about But there's a self-check for women when self-check. it comes to that. But there's not a self-check when it comes to men. So even if it's just an awareness, hey, man, do you know your family history as yeah. far as your health? That's just a conversational piece. Or... When you're getting your yearly physicals, because you're getting, you're getting yearly sports physicals to play mm-hmm, ball, mm-hmm. you know. So, and then on a larger scale, I just want to see, like, you know, in October, man, let's see this blue and make an awareness that right, yo, right. this is this is this is another what the pandemic. Yeah. Because if it's one out of six men and we at the top, that's another thing yeah, that's man. not even being talked about. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and if you don't deal with it, it will deal with you. Yeah. It's yeah. Aggr- it can be aggressive, and if it comes back, if you mm-hmm. had it before. Most likely, it's going to be an aggressive. Okay, so it, it can come back. Mm-hmm. So it, it, that's if you don't have the prostate removed. Correct. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Hmm. So some guys, some guys select to do radiation. You now, know. what's the difference between what you did versus the radiation? Because you, you, you didn't have radiation. No. Okay. No, I did, I was I was thankful enough not to have radiation that it was confined to my prostate and okay. there was nothing that was trying to. Spread out. Spread outside of, like, my lymph nodes or anything like that. Gotcha. Probably what they said, well, we need to follow up radiation. So mm-hmm. I do have a couple partners that um that are going through that, that mm-hmm. went through that. And okay. they're, they're younger than me. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I just I just want to, God just put on my heart, the man, just to really to be an advocate for this, man, because I think Facts. it's important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, man, I certainly appreciate you coming through and uh, sharing your story, uh, your oh, testimony. Man. Thank um, you. Enlightening us because, uh, you know, you know, like you said, the flyer had an older white gentleman on it, so you automatically start to think, oh, it's an older, something that would, if it's going to happen, it, I'll be much older when it does. Correct. Who cares? Correct. But, you know, you could be 30, 40, 50 years old and, uh, you know, have this issue. Correct. Um, and um, 
it's it's very important that. So when's your, your last physical, man? You went dirty deacon. Mine was physical? I'm I'm due this year because okay. last year was my my annual. I give them annually. What's your PSA level? I I couldn't even tell you right now, but I I'm not in the. I'm I'm not outside of oh, my range. Dirty, I'm sorry, my bad. They call him Dirty Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. But I tell you, do you, talk amongst yourselves for just a second, two seconds, uh, Deacon Dirty and Dave. Well, I actually uh, have a my annual is, is due next week, so okay. so I'll definitely be asking about my PSA level. Good man, good brother. And uh, my father, he's actually a survivor of uh, prostate cancer. Is that right? Yeah, okay. he's a survivor, and which is you know interesting that you came on the show today to talk about that. There is a family history because my grandfather, he um, he passed, I think it was about four years now, maybe. Okay. Uh, you know, t- to, to similar d- uh, disease. Gotcha. But they caught it early in my father, though. So okay. the last time I went to go have my um, annual checked, I was fine. But, you know, again, like I said, next week I'm going to gonna ask. So Good. see if I'm still okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> love right, you don't, you know, I don't, I feel fine, you yeah. know, but that doesn't mean anything until I actually... See what's up. Right. And I'd like to invite you brothers out, man. You know, one of our meetings and you just you can hear the different stories, you know, um, black, brown, white, yeah, yeah. um, Hispanic, um, guys just testifying and you, we've had some guys that just came to support and they decided to get physical after hearing what they heard. Okay. And they also like, you know, I don't know. You gotta I come back and talk about the walk too. That you're just trying to put together. Yeah, most definitely, man. I'm, you know. Yeah, we gotta see if we get past the, through this pan well. We'll probably be done by with the pandemic by election time. So right. it change. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's over. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, j- uh, no, I don't even want to say. It. I couldn't even have it come out my mouth. I almost said the 45th is. Just say 45. <laughs> this is I 45. Could, almost said it. Uh, no, don't, don't speak his name up here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Biden is the new pres- president. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye. <laughs> yeah, Kanye is the new Moses. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's a whole nother. <laughs> yeah, I mean. He ain't here for that, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Let but my yeah, people man. Go. <laughs> this is very enlightening, man. Very um informative. Um yes. is there anywhere where people can go to to read up on it, to get information about it? Yeah, um, And this is guys of any age and, and, and race and background. Yeah, I would just tell them to search uh, prostate cancers. Uh, just type in prostate cancers. A lot of information out there. Um I'm on Facebook. Um was it DB Moffitt on Instagram at uh, Moffitt920. Um, like I said, my flyers are usually be on there for okay. my support group. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a and lot. And that's of open. Yeah, that's, come in and that's open. Okay. So we have a, um, well, you can come to my job and facilitate it. You yeah, know, yeah, we do yeah, the yeah, COVID okay. and all of that um, precautions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but we're also setting up a virtual for people that want to participate from out of town or okay. just don't feel comfortable. I'm with you. But, you know, it's just part of having um, a conversation, mm-hmm. a real conversation. And uh, Do you find that a talk. lot of men or s- you know, in the in the meetings are kind of embarrassed by it and I tell you don't want to really man, share? Um, what has really surprised me is God, I, I figure guys would just be like this. Mm-hmm. And they just open it up, open man. It up, okay. And I think that openness is opening up a lot of other things, mm-hmm. where, whether communication with your spouse, communication on your job, communication yeah. with your kids, yeah, yeah. stuff that you just hold in, that you just feel like you can come talk. Because, you know, we go to a game, we go to a bar, mm-hmm. we talk all day long. Yeah. But we talk about those things that are really important. We, we tend to it's struggle. It's, yeah, absolutely. Struggle. Yeah. 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 Well, again, man, I certainly appreciate you coming through and I appreciate uh, sharing you your story. Me, man. Absolutely, really man. Uh, when you hit me up, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a no-brainer. I mean, why you asking? Just p- pull up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, I'm glad you came through to share the story. Hopefully, uh, you men watching women who have men or sons, have them go get their prostate check. Um, it's a quick exam. Um, it is a little intrusive, but <laughs> hey, what's a, di- a digit amongst friends? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? To find yeah. out you know, whether or not you need to look further yes. uh, to get your PS. What is it? PSA. PSA levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure you're in range and all that good stuff. But um, uh, So give me your um, IG and Facebook again. Where can they find yeah, you? Yeah, my Facebook is DB Moffett, M-O-F-F-E-T-T, F as in Frank. And my Instagram is Moff, M-O-F-F-920. That's what's up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know she ain't on here. She ain't want to talk. She ain't going to talk. But where couldn't they get wifey single, I choose you? Marjane, M-A-R-J-A-N-E. Oh, yeah. With, with the, the hyphen. Accent. 
thing over the E. Make sure you say Marginet. Marginet. Don't, don't say nothing different. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Did I say that yeah. right? I say Marginet right? <laughs> oh, 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 I guess I thought I said it. <laughs> oh, anywhere music is sold, digital platforms. That's yeah. it. Marjane, I choose you. You got to get that, y'all. Yeah, she got a remix on it, too. Really? Yeah. Who on the remix? She on the remix. She's on the remix. Okay. She's, I think she's going to plug somebody up. <laughs> hey, I just ex- I get excited. I get excited. I get excited. <laughs> right, that's what's up. Is it a is it a co uh, collab? No. No. I'm still kind of thinking about it. Okay. 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 It's banging too. That's what's up. It's oh, so we went up te- up tempo on it. Yeah, yeah. Got a little, got a little. You know, you can listen to it on a uh, vacation. What? The, yeah, on the <laughs> beach. Yeah, yeah. That is what's up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, when when it drops, when when are you coming back to the show? That's number one. Okay. 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 All right. That's what's up. I'm trying to get her to do her own podcast because she likes to do Facebook. I live. see her. I'm like, I, mean, I see the joints. Yeah. yeah, you got. Marjane got a lot to say. Outside of her music, she got a lot to say. She got a lot to minister. All about. this studio. <laughs> so. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> putting her all on the spot. <laughs> That's what's up. It's your boy G Way holding it down. G Way Podcast. G Way Podcast. I can't even say dot com, dude. Uh, thinking out loud network.com and I'm kicking it alongside <laughs> with my man Deacon. Dirty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, all that. The G Way Podcast. The G Way Podcast. Bringing you the cool interviews, the hot, hot topics, topics, and all that other crap. The, the G Way Podcast, Podcast with, with Deacon, Deacon Dirty. Dirty.